The amazing story of David Lang of Gallatin, Tennessee, was first publicized by none other than the famous American writer Ambrose Bierce. Since Bierce was a skeptic of the First Order, those tales of the supernatural which he saw fit to vouch for need little else to give them authenticity. Of these, however, none is better documented and none more baffling than the curious case of the man who vanished. The thing happened in a field. It was a flat, ordinary field stretching out beyond the David Lang farmhouse near Gallatin, Tennessee. On that late afternoon in September of 1880, Lang himself and his wife sat on the back porch. There's a buggy coming yonder, Dave. I reckon it's that there fellow from Gallatin. Name's Corey. He said he might come out and talk business this afternoon. I'd better get a move on. Well, where are you going, Dave? Fetch in the horses. I'll be back in a minute. David Lang started across the field at a dog trot, and he had almost reached the middle of it when his wife suddenly leaped to her feet and... Dave! Dave, where are you? Where'd you go? Mrs. Lang raced across the field to the point where she had last seen her husband. And as she ran, she saw that the horse and buggy on the road had stopped and that another figure was rapidly approaching her. They met in midfield and looked at each other in blank bewilderment. He, he disappeared. But he couldn't have. He must have fell down a hole of some kind. But there ain't any hole. Three nights after Lang's disappearance, his widow wandered alone and inconsolable near the spot where she had suffered her great loss. Suddenly, she heard the voice of a man in distress. Help! Help me, somebody! Help! Dave, where are you? Help me, somebody! I can hear your voice, Help. but I can't see you. Help. Tell me where to find you, Dave! There were other members of the family. There were neighbors who testified that it was unquestionably the voice of David Lang. For two weeks, it continued to call out periodically, growing fainter each time. And then, at last, it was silent. The winter passed, and spring came, and Mr. Corey, the gentleman from Gallatin, had come out once again to discuss with Mrs. Lang the business which had been so tragically interrupted the previous September. As they talked, they strolled slowly across the field. And then, at the same instant, both of them stopped short and stared open-mouthed at the ground beneath them. It's the same spot, the place where, where we last saw David. Him, look at it now. Must be 15 feet across, a circle of dead grass. Dr. Hearn, the Viennese scientist, suggested that he had stepped into a void spot in the universal ether and had been annihilated. And a prominent physicist hazarded the opinion that some sort of magnetic field had speeded up the atomic vibrations of his body, thus projecting him into a new vibratory dimension. But these are mere guesses. The guesses which science must resort to when faced by facts that defy analysis. Facts incredible, but true. (laughs) 